suffering. As a noun, it means the state of undergoing pain, distress, or hardship. When most people lose a job, they're dealing with suffering. They're trying to struggle to get through an everyday life cycle while trying to figure out how to make money to provide for their family. However, suffering, or suffer, can be used as a verb. That is to experience or be subjected to something bad or unpleasant. Like most people watching DSP, they have to suffer through it. But at the same time, if you're looking at it through an archaic sense, it could be a sense of tolerating it. Meaning that we have to watch the video, so we have to tolerate it. Or suffer through it. But this case though, Phil wants to sit there and say he, he's the king of suffering, but yet all of a sudden, he's getting what he wants out of everything, so he really shouldn't be suffering. That is, that man wants to say that he had to go out and get sushi just because his wife asked for it, yet he is suffering. What? Let's talk about yesterday, a little segment that I like to call, if I could click it, Phil's Day Off. Then again, I love how he doesn't say that it's everyone's favorite segment because apparently nobody likes Phil's Day Off. But yet he likes to talk about it in very minute detail because he thinks that his life is so fucking interesting. Phil, you're not a vlogger. Granted, you used to do vlogs, but you weren't really much of a vlogger anyway. I've seen people that can vlog a lot fucking better, and their lives are a lot more interesting than yours. <clears throat> okay. Now. <clears throat> My fucking god, dude. Why don't you just mute your goddamn mic when you clear their fucking throat? I mean, Jesus Christ. First time that I really had a day off in two weeks. The week before was the when I was sick, and that was the day when I had all my groceries getting delivered and everything. Um, and then I ended up doing a, a night stream instead. <clears throat> you know, I didn't really have a real day off for two weeks. So, Motherfucker, you had all the time in the world to recover. So that was essentially your way of taking time off. So yes, you fucking did. Oh, I didn't have a time off. So you think that being sick is a part of your work regimen. It's like, good to know. But yet, at the same fucking time, you were bitching and complaining about having your groceries delivered because they didn't deliver to you on time. That you had to wait. The man that claims to be very patient has no patience. So, this was... <clears throat> also, keep in mind, he also had to take care of his wife, too. So, <laughs> boo-hoo, more work. My first day off in a couple of weeks. And, thankfully, I did not have to do too much in regards to, um, like, errands and things like that. Like, a lot of these days off, I have to run around, I have to do appointments... I have to do a bunch of things. I have to cram them all to the same day. In this case, I really only had <clears throat> two things. Grocery store and pet supplies. Well, then again, Jasper does need his $50 worth of fucking cat treats. So no shit, you had to go to the grocery store because Jasper is feasting like a fucking king. Also, grocery store every time he has to go on his day off like phil you have no idea how to financially budget anything you could do all of this in one week maybe two weeks if you could just go without going to the fucking grocery store but the problem is, is that he wants to get it all done at the same day either a to get away from his wife or b so his wife could get away from him i mean there's a lot of things that go on here and we can all speculate and that was it so it wasn't a huge deal um <clears throat> Oh my god, Phil, why? Why is it that you can make all these fucking noises at once? I mean, for God's sakes, pigs don't snort as much as you do. Sorry, I know that's disgusting. After And yet you acknowledge it's disgusting. They why, why don't you mute your mic? Oh, I can't do that. Dumb kids. Last week's debacle ordering groceries and having to pay extra money to have them delivered, only to have them be delivered super late and everything... I was not doing that this week. I said, I'm going to the grocery store to buy stuff. And it made sense, too, because this week, my wife wants to try out a couple of recipes that either she hasn't done in a very long time or, like, a new one. Like, for example, she has she makes this really good Japanese curry. And we used to have it all the time. And then we haven't had it in, like, I'm serious, like a year. And all of a sudden, we're like, dude, let's do the Japanese curry. Like, that's so, such a good dish. So we, I had to get those ingredients. I'm like, well, I want to see what they got there and pick from the shelves rather than me trying to guess online what they're going to have and try to order and deliver. Two things that is very wrong with this. One, he claimed that he had COVID, so he now he decides to go out and buy shit. 
The man that says he has COVID wants to go out into the world and spread the sickness around even more. I mean, Phil, you're becoming a danger to society when you do so, and it's not a smart move to do. Also, two, your wife wants to make food, huh? So it's really miraculous that she recovered relatively fast. Unless this whole thing was a big fucking grift from the get-go, which it clearly probably was. Um, and, get this. Today, we are doing homemade deluxe baked nachos for dinner. Dinner nachos. Well, whoop de fucking do Phil. It's not really that special. It's just listen to this. <laughs> Why? Why are you creating sound clips, Phil? Why? Why you do this? It was for dinner. Dinner nachos. It's just listen to this. Brand dude, there's a sound for you. You're welcome. First of all, rather than a fatty bad meat, we're gonna do ground turkey that's gonna be seasoned and fried up with some like taco flavor seasoning, all right? And in it, it's gonna have olives, jalapeno, pickle jalapenos, pico de gallo, queso, plus some Mexican blend cheese. Um, oh, refried beans, okay? All over this, these, I bought a giant bag of restaurant quality tortilla chips. And then we're gonna have like sour cream on the side and stuff to dip it in too. So I was like, Let's why don't you just put the sour cream on top, Phil? I mean, for God's sakes, dipping a bunch of nachos that's already on a chip into sour cream is not very productive, Phil. I mean, for fuck's sakes, do you do you know how to nacho? We love nachos, but, you know, we don't... Clearly not, because the last time you ate nachos, you bitched to complain that they were too fucking soggy and you hated it. We really order them that often. We're like, why don't we make our own? And this way we can pick the ingredients that we want, right? So we're actually kind of having this really cool dinner tonight and we never done this before we never made our own like this no because you always ordered out and you bitch like a blame when they're too soggy i mean wah cry 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 <clears throat> but that's what i mean like having to go going to the supermarket and picking these ingredients out while i was there versus guessing what they're gonna have trying to order online and then getting a bunch of substitutions or you know it's much better that way so Huh, so the man that always constantly door dash finally figured out that, hey, going to the grocery store and picking out your own ingredients is a lot better and time saving as well as money saving. I'm like, wow, I had, wow, I, like my mind is blown that he finally figured this out. But then again, he will just completely forget about it. This should be pretty fun today if she does make them because I think she said she wanted to make them for dinner today. It'd be a good way to reward myself after uh, my first ever session of Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. Have some homemade baked nachos. Should be pretty good. But Phil, whatever it is that you're fucking doing, stop doing that. It's very distracting. And not only that, but it's causing a lot of movement to the mic. Like, imagine that I'm just talking right now and my mic keeps constantly moving and you hear a bunch of noises. Does it get annoying? It really does. But, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so, you know, that's pretty much what I did, with, you know, with the grocery shop. And we needed some pet stuff for Jasper and stuff like that. $50 bags of cat treats, and then we wonder why Jasper's not feeling good, and then all of a sudden, big fiasco with the fucking vet visit yet again. Um, <clears throat> so, overall, I was out like maybe two, three hours yesterday doing that stuff. Um, outside of that, uh, we actually did a little bit of house cleaning. Um, yeah, you heard it right. The sick housewife has to go clean because he can't do it all by himself. And we did manage to get Like a Dragon Gaiden. It did show up on Game Pass yesterday. It was so weird that it never showed up for preload, ever. It only showed up once it was live and available on Game Pass. Then you could download it, but it was never, like, available beforehand to preload. <clears throat> Even though that may or may not be the case, it's like, why are you surprised that Like a Dragon Gaiden is now available for Game Pass? But then again, Phil, Like a Dragon or Yakuza is really not your kind of game. Because every single time that you've seen you play these type of games, you're passing the fuck out because you're bored of them. And you, knowing you, you're going to bitch and complain that the cutscenes are way too fucking long. And when we finally get into the gameplay, oh, another cutscene. Oh, man, now it's just sit there. Ambien just kicked in and... So we did load it, but then my wife ended up not really feeling like playing it yesterday. So uh, I didn't get spoiled or anything on the game. Um, yeah, because knowing you, do you just want to watch your wife play video games? Imagine watching someone else play video games and you're not playing the game for yourself. Classic Phil. We ended up watching a lot of uh, someone else playing Alan Wake 2. 
and well, then again, classic Phil watching someone else play a video game. And let me tell you guys something, and we'll talk about this because I want to give you my final thoughts on the game. But the whole point of Alan Wake 2, all right, is that there's two protagonists, and you can switch between them on the fly. And when you do that, it creates variety and it makes the game better, all right? We're watching someone who literally, they claimed they were going to do that, and then they proceeded to play with one of the characters only for like 10 hours, and it makes the game so fucking boring. Not really, Phil. If that's what they want to do, they can feel free to do so. They can play as either Saga or Alan Wake. You're bitching and complaining about someone else having fun and enjoying their own way of playing the game, and yet you're going through your playthrough and like, why could they be like me, Dark Side Phil, playing both characters on the fly? Switch, 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 switch. Oh yeah, I'm. It's totally fun when I do it, but when someone else is having fun their own way, it's fucking boring. Because you're doing the same gameplay over and over and over with no variety. And it makes it feel very boring. And I was thinking in my head, <clears throat> you know? Then again, you have no coherent thoughts that go into your head. I mean, for God's sakes, the amount of gin that you consume and the amount of Advil that you have to pop, then yeah, you have no coherent thought at all. That's exactly why Alan Wake 1 wasn't as good. Because in Alan Wake 1, you're just playing as Alan Wake. It's one style of gameplay. There's no variety to it. And once you get halfway through the game and you realize this is the whole game, you get bored. Not really, Phil. I mean, Alan Wake 1 had a lot to offer for it. It had decent gameplay that people either liked or didn't like. It had a good story that you could be immersed in. And it's a very, very good mystery. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it very much is. But you're looking at Alan Wake 1 that was released in 2010. That that's what Remedy was making at the time, and you're thinking that that's boring. But now you're looking at 2, which was released 13 years after the first one. And you're like, oh, this one's a lot better. I'm surprised that he didn't say, oh, the visuals, the graphics are pretty. With Alan Wake 2, because you have the two protagonists and because you can swap between them, that's really where it excels, in my opinion. So well, then again, you kind of fail to realize that at the, after the events of Alan Wake 1, he was missing. So it makes sense to have Saga as the one of the main playable protagonists and then have Alan Wake. So it makes a lot more sense, but I don't think Phil ever got to that point. So... What's weird about that is, why would you choose not to switch when it's a gameplay mechanic that's in there, right? Because that's entirely up to the player. Duh. So we're watching this guy play, and he's just like, not switching. And we're like, this is going to be so boring. He just keeps doing the same thing over and over. Why? I don't understand. <clears throat> I don't know. And I just love the fact that Phil has to criticize other people for playing the game how they want to, but yet he wants to say that how he does things is a lot better. Keep this in mind. It's funny because, again, so many people criticize my playthroughs, right? Well, with good reason, Phil, because every single time you're playing a video game, you're bored. And you're boring to watch. And they say that my playthroughs suck. And then I watch these other people, I'm like, these are way worse than mine. You see what I mean? He is his own best critic, but when it comes to everyone else, he loves to criticize the way that people like to play the video game. Like, if I was playing Mario Wonder and I played it at my own fucking pace and the way that I wanted to, he would probably look at it and be like, why God, he's not looking for everything, not looking for all the secrets? This is very fucking boring. Watch my playthrough while I'm just looking at the chat over and over trying to find the secrets. They, they really don't try to make their playthroughs interesting in any way. <laughs> they, 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 imagine if I played Alan Wake 2 and I literally just played with Saga the entire fucking game and never swapped. Phil, it's not the game that people are interested in. They're interested in the person streaming the game. They like the personality more than the game. That's why a lot of these streamers that are out there that get a lot of attendees, that's the main reason why they come to the streams. It's not really necessarily the game. But Phil likes to think that it's always about the game and never about the personality, which is very delusional because Phil seems to think that people are coming to watch him and not the game, but yet bitches and complains about people not talking about the game. Wow, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be fun gameplay? Wouldn't you be bored to tears? So nope, if the person was entertaining, no. So, I don't know, man, but this is what other people do, and then people say that I suck. So that's why I just don't listen to the bullshit anymore. I know that people have just been nitpicking me for years and years because I do my best to try to give you guys variety. When I play <clears throat> a Soulsborne game, I try to swap weapons, show you different builds, show you different play styles, show you variety. <clears throat> no, you fucking don't. 
your Elden Ring playthrough says otherwise. You're going for a certain build in that game, and you're trying to milk it for all it's worth with it. Liza P, now nah, you just stuck with one weapon, and you went all the way through with it. Changed it to a better weapon every single fucking time. But again, you want to say that you're providing variety, when in reality, you're really not. Instead, it's the same thing every fucking time. You sitting there, looking bored, going clown mode to try to get people to give you money, bitch and complain when you're not getting enough money, and then you end the stream either A, getting more money than you anticipated, or B, not getting the money than you anticipated, and you're getting upset about it. So, a man that says that he has variety in his gameplay and on his streams doesn't really have much variety when it's the same thing every fucking time, different game. When I play a game with character swapping, I actually try to swap the characters to show you variety. Like, that's the point, right? Not really, Phil. It's the point of having fun. Do you want to switch the characters? Again, if you choose to. If you choose to have fun that way, then that's the only exception to it. But again, you're criticizing other people for playing the game, having fun their own way, and yet you're saying that your way is better. Even though when people give you valid criticism, you completely ignore it, and that's what you essentially you're implying, and that's what you're telling us here. Um, so, anyway, um, yeah, uh, we watched a lot of that, and, um, did we do something? I, I felt like there was one other thing I wanted to tell you guys about. Oh, I tested Modern Warfare 3. Now, I gotta call out a big bullshit story. All right. Oh, God. Phil calling out bullshit stories, even though he tells bullshit stories. So, if you remember, earlier this week, okay, all these news stories came out about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. And the news stories basically said, oh, Modern Warfare 3 is a huge hard drive hog. If you want to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, this game takes up over 200 gigabytes of your hard drive space no matter what format you play it on and it doesn't care about your other games it requires you to have to waste that much space it's crazy right i love how phil is bringing up this story like it's a hot new story even though people already knew about it <clears throat> and, and everyone reads this as fact and says wow that's terrible i mean why would it take up so much of your hard drive space what a hog that's really messed up the whole story is a lie how is it a lie, Phil? If they're bringing out what reported to be that big of a size, then yeah, that's kind of a bad thing. But when you look at it through a modern gaming perspective, that's becoming the norm now. When games used to be a lot fucking smaller but provide a lot more gameplay and content to it, now it's going up higher and higher and higher and higher. You have Baldur's Gate 3 that could go up to 150 gigs. You have Spider-Man 2 that goes up to 90. You have Mortal Kombat 1 that goes up to 110. Again, it highly depends on what the game has to offer and also what graphic engine that they're using. But then again, that's all that I'm saying from speculation alone. Yeah, the whole fucking story was a complete and utter lie. How do I know? Because last night, I downloaded and booted up Modern Warfare 3. Okay, here's how it works. You can choose what content you want to download in modern warfare 3 oddly enough when you buy modern warfare 3 they allow you to download modern warfare 2 why because it's the same game now do you have to download modern warfare 2 no you don't need it at all but it's there and available you can choose to actively download it if you want you just don't have to Okay, when you're okay, and your point is you're saying that it's a lie, though, but now you're going into it saying, oh, yeah, you got to download all this. Again, where are you going with this? You're downloading Modern Warfare 3. It actively has multiple downloads available. Multiplayer, <clears throat> Warzone, Campaign, and these five add-on packs. Each one of those segments I just described is around 20 to 25 gigs in size. So if you install all of the pieces of Modern Warfare 3, it's around 100 gigs. Then there's these five add-on packs, and they're only 10 megabytes each. So I don't even know what the hell they are, okay? You didn't even bother to look at them? Did you, didn't, did you even bother to read what the packs were, Phil? Nah, you just wanted to look at the multiplayer and the campaign. Yep, I'm good to go. Fuck Warzone and all the other shit. But that's what's available. So what did I do? I said, well, what am I playing today? 
Well, all I want to do is play the multiplayer. You know, eventually I'm going to get to Warzone. And I don't know if I'll ever play the campaign. You know, the reports are that the campaign of this game is terrible. And... Yep. This man just claims that he's reading reviews of the campaign. And he's looking at other sources to read the camp, Like, looking into the campaign. And he saw that it was terrible. So the man that claims that he plays all the video games, fuck all the bullshit, is listening to the quote-unquote bullshit. I'm not really caring that much about it. I thought that the Modern Warfare 1 reboot campaign was decent and good. I thought that the Modern Warfare 2 campaign was, man, not that good. I've heard the Modern Warfare 3 campaign is atrociously bad. Um, yeah, by looking at reviews. <clears throat> so I'm like, I don't want to download that. So all I downloaded was the multiplayer and the five add-on packs. The multiplayer, I'm not kidding you, 20 gigs. And then I added the multi, the add-on packs. That was it. And I think, okay, I take it back because there's a base game download as well. So it might be like another 20 gigs. So I think all in all, <clears throat> actually, I can actually tell you. I love the fact that Phil's like, oh, it has all this. And he doesn't even have it up and running to show you. But then again, he's not going to show you it on his screen. Instead, he's just going to show you it on him showing you it. <laughs> here, if I go on here. Oops, I booted the game by accident. So what I meant to do. Even though your fingers slipped because you have very, very clumsy fingers. If I go to my games and apps and I go to Call of Duty, manage. Okay, so right now, with the multiplayer only installed and those add-ons that were necessary, okay? The game is 133 gigs on my Xbox Series X. Again, that's pretty fucking big. The only reason why they put in the 200 and so is because, like you mentioned, it's Modern Warfare 2. But again, you want to look at that and say that's a whole fucking lie, when in reality, they're going by what is reported. So you're saying that a report that could easily be changed as time goes on, that's a lie. It's a projection of what the game size will be, but you're taking it as, like, true fucking fact. Okay? So that's being matter-of-fact honest about it. Now... If I downloaded Warzone, it'd probably be another 20, 30 gigs. If I download the campaign, it'd probably be another 20, 30 gigs. But that's because they're all separate. Why don't you look at those? The Warzone, the campaign packs. Look at those and tell us how big they are. Instead, he's not going to do that. Instead, he's just going to sit there going, Oh no, the multiplayer in the base game is 130 gigs. They're not even the same product. Is Warzone the same as multiplayer of Modern Warfare 3? Well, technically, if you want to look at it that way, yes, it is a form of multiplayer. It's just its own separate thing. No, they're not the same game. It's different. It's the same type of game, Phil. Modes of the same game, but they're definitely not the same gameplay. Is the campaign the same? No, of course not. Well, the campaign is just a single player mode, Phil. The gameplay will still remain the fucking same. So all of those, including the multiplayer, have the same type of fucking gameplay, Phil. So yes, in one way or another, it is considered to be the fucking same. So... The entire story is a lie, because guess what you can do? You can boot up just the mode you want and play it. I know, because I confirmed it last night. On my day off, I booted up Modern Warfare 3, and I went to multiplayer. And, of course, I turned on all the settings, so there's no pop-ups and shit, which is good. We got it already ready for today. And yep, so essentially all the fun is ruined. I booted it up, and it worked. I was like, so let me get this straight. 130 gigs on my hard drive. I can play it. It's not 230, 260 gigs. They lied. And they didn't lie, Phil. They were just going by what was reported. So it's not a lie. But instead, you're looking at it saying it's a lie. So you can find a way to stick your nose in the fucking journalism and be like, ha ha, game journalist. Fuck you, IGN. I'm more like, knowledgeably sound than y'all are. Answer is yes, they lied. All of these fucking websites, okay? All these news websites, they're all going for clickbait stories now. Every one of them is going for a clickbait story because they don't have news anymore. They're literally drama sites and not true gaming sites or even true news sites anymore. They just care about getting clickbait views for their fucking ads. How is reporting the size of a game drama? How is that a lie? How is all of this a drama? That's why I want to know about this, Phil. How is telling the people how big the game is but how is that drama that, that's i'm still stuck on this though because he wants to look at everything as drama he wants to look at everything as clickbait but yet this is coming from the man that likes to create drama and he likes to create a lot of clickbait with his own fucking videos so it kind of makes sense coming from phil because he loves to project that's all that he does project 
deflect and reject any criticisms. So they all reported this false article because every one of them did it. It was like every major outlet reported this a few days ago. Oh, you need 260 gigs to play Modern Warfare 3. It's a complete lie. Phil, did you even read the fucking articles that you're proclaiming that to be a lie and drama? Because if you did, they would have told you why it's 260 gigs. But instead, he just wants to look at the headline and the little subtitle underneath the headline and go, Oh yeah, they lied because I had the proof right here. And he just boots up his console without even showing anybody his screen. So again, he's just making up bullshit to go along to fit his own fucking narrative. You download what you want, you play what you want. Sure, if you're someone who's literally going to be playing the campaign, Warzone, and multiplayer all at once, then maybe it's 260 gigs. Who the fuck does that? <clears throat> right? Who the fuck does that? Hmm, who does that? People that want to download what they want to play first and have it playing or downloading in the background. That's exactly why they did that, Phil. Do you want to play the campaign first while you wait for the multiplayer to be downloaded? Go for it. If you want to play multiplayer and wait for the other shit to be downloaded, again, go for it. But he wants to sit there and goes, who really does all this shit? And who makes up this drama for the sake of drama? Huh, it must be Phil. And the other thing is, if you're playing the campaign, you finish it, you delete it. Why are you going to leave the campaign on your hard drive? You beat it, it's done, fuck it, get off, the, get off my console. Well, some people might want to go in there to try to get all the achievements for it, Phil. There are people that will do that. They can go through the game, play it, and then go back and get all the rest of the achievements for it. People can have fun in their own ways, Phil, but if they want to delete it, they're more entitled to do so. But again, you're just sitting here bitching and complaining about nothing. Right? So what are they talking about? And it really pisses me off because I'm tired of this bullshit drama news. It's not real. It's not real, even though they're just telling you how big the game is, Phil. It's not drama. But instead, you want to make it drama because that's all you're about is drama, drama, drama. Oh, wait, no, I don't talk about the drama. No, no, fuck you. I'm just, I'm tired of the bullshit. So anyway, I'm ready to go for today, and I did test this last night. That's why I wanted to let you know. I, I spent the time, I was like, let's get this going. Let's make sure this works today. Yeah, let's make sure it works today. Hold on. Got to get rid of the settings that makes it more entertaining for people to watch me. And I was like, well, how, what do I got to download? And I get it all set up. I'm like, so it's completely wrong what they said. Like, not even close to what they were reporting. God fucking damn. This is like the fifth fucking time he kept saying that the news outlets are wrong about something. Even though they're not wrong. They're just, per like, presenting what's out there. They're trying to help people with it. But no, it's all a lie. Reporting. Anyway, um, so that's really my day off. I don't really have much else to say about my day off. Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't the most eventful day. But yet, for some fucking reason, you want to sit there and pretend that people are interested in your day off. Oh, I went grocery shopping. <laughs> Good job. He went grocery shopping. Yay. Highlight met. At the same time, I needed a, a, a more relaxed day after... The insanely stressful week to week and a half I had being so sick. Phil, you had all the time in the world to relax. But then again, your quote unquote job gives you that. Because all you do is just sit there and play video games. Most people would kill to do that. But they don't. Instead, they're actual fucking adults going out to their actual jobs. Their 9 to 5 jobs, which you call them losers for, by the way. And they're making money to provide for themselves, help sure that they survive, and provide for their family. Something that you claim that you do, but you really fucking don't. Um, It was appreciated to spend some time with my wife, watch some Alan Wake, you know, have some food. And we ordered, of all things, we ordered sushi for dinner. Oh god, we're going back to the whole thing about sushi, how it costs a lot of money, because if the wife wants sushi, the wife gets it. My wife was craving sushi, and it's funny because she was basically saying, um, <clears throat> she was basically saying that she wanted to prepare for Like a Dragon Gaiden, and she's very excited for Like a Dragon Gaiden, she loves the series. Yeah, I don't believe you for that, Phil, due to the fact that we never hear her side of anything. So, we're just going to go by what you say. Oh, my wife really likes this series, so I got to get her some sushi, because she can get into Like a Dragon Gaiden. Oh, God. So, she was feeling some kind of Japanese food, and I said, well, you know, there's various things we can order. We can get, like, a, like a, a teriyaki from somewhere, you know, we could do, like, a ramen from somewhere. 
But we're thinking about, we're like, let's get sushi. So we ordered some sushi, and we got this one kind that... It was interesting because it was salmon, but it was also shrimp tempura, and it had, like, mango on top with, like, a chili sauce. It was, like, a completely unique combination, and we really liked it. <clears throat> we thought it tasted really good, so... And I love the fact that Phil had to end that off with, we got sushi because my wife wanted it because of Yakuza Gaiden or Like a Dragon Gaiden. Because we got to get into it, guys. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> the way that he tries to move on, it's just him going, Ugh! So in the midst of all of that, he ended up going on to do his daily beg. But in this case, it is particularly interesting here. Due to the fact that he says he never runs ads, but yet for some reason he wanted to proclaim that he has to run them here. Because he's suffering. It's like, my god, did he ever ask Kat, Hey, would you marry me? I know, are you well in the suffering? Guys, I'm really hoping for a strong bounce back week. You know, last week, I lost out on a lot of streaming days because I was sick. There was no... Halloween marathon because of it, it set me back significantly. Yeah, we know, Phil, that you had to cancel all of your streams just because you were sick, but yet for some reason you kept up DSP versus the internet up, so that way you can get some memberships and some tips to come in, because you're that fucking greedy. But also, I'm going to say this from my perspective, I'm kind of disappointed that he didn't do his Halloween marathon event, just because I wanted to see what costume he had in mind for this. All right. And then we had a series of many good days, meaning people were coming and being very supportive on the streams with, with support and everything. And then we ended up having like one or two really slow days. And it kind of negated the help that I had had during those days where people were being more generous. And it sucked. It really did. And I think the reason is because I was playing these games that I'd already been playing for three weeks and people were feeling stagnated. And I understand that. And I told you last week a lot of times, I feel the thing is, about games today a lot of these new games are 30 plus hours long love of phil wants to say that he got a lot of generosity thrown his way but he prevails to mention the fucking chargeback that he had to pay out that 100 dollars. so he didn't make a whole lot of money but yet his math was clearly off though due to the fact that he only made 116 but later on 16 dollars to say he claimed he got nothing but also another thing that he fails to understand is that he's playing all these games all mix mashed around spider-man 2 alan wake 2 mario wonder and now he's going to be play like a dragon gaiden he's going to play the call of duty like modern warfare 3 multiplayer but yeah he's looking at all of this going oh it's starting to stagnate but he doesn't give a fuck he just wants you to throw money at him some more and I'm a variety streamer. I don't just sit here and play one game constantly. Which, that's what a lot of streamers tend to do, Phil. And that's why they're more successful. They can play the game for like one, two, maybe five streams. And be done with the game entirely. And they can move on to the next one. Or they can just do something stupid along the way. But you, you want to mix and match it all around. To the point where nobody really gives a fuck. Oh, people are playing Mario? Nah, I'm just too kiddy. I don't want to play that. Oh, he's playing Spider-Man 2? Nah, it's comic book. I don't want to watch that. It's just very fucking unprofessional coming from a guy that claims that he runs a successful business and he's an interactive streamer but doesn't do anything to interact with his audience. So it could take me upwards of three weeks to a month to get through a game that's that long. And also, 30 hours needs a month. No, it fucking doesn't, Phil. There are people that have beaten Spider-Man 2 within two days, maybe a week, and they're done. But he's going to sit there and go, oh, I can't believe that people are beating this game. What the fuck, you no-lifers? And it's frustrating when I'm liking the games I'm playing, right? And I'm doing a good, and then something, throws, something screws it up. You know, my illness, <clears throat> it really did set me back. It hurt me big time because it put me not only behind on all the games I was playing, but then a big marathon that people were hyped for got canceled. So that, you know, that support I would have got during the marathon is gone. Yeah, because you gassed it up to say that this is going to be the best marathon. Oh, this Halloween marathon stream is going to be the best, guys. And all of a sudden, you got sick, canceled it. You didn't even bother to do anything for them. You didn't put on the costume. You didn't do anything. Instead, the only thing that you did was that DSP versus the internet Halloween event. That's all that you fucking did. And you thought, eh, that's good enough. They should give me money, right? You know, people were probably saving up 
to support during that marathon and that marathon just you know it's not coming back i don't have time to do it i'm so backlogged on games now I can't go back and do a Halloween marathon after the fact, you see? I love the fact that as soon as he says all this stupid shit, though, he's thinking that a lot of these people were saving up their allowances just to give it to Phil. It's like, no, what people are doing with their own money is up to them and not you. And also, I see that someone decided to give him a $50 super chat. So, huh, him bitching, whining, and complaining paid off for some fucking reason. So, this week... If you can support my streams, please do. Anything is appreciated. I mean, a super chat, a membership, a gifted membership, a tip, all appreciated. Uh, I would love to get things much back on track now. Yeah, I love the things to get back on track with the daily snorts that come out of my mouth and my nose. Yeah, I really want that money, guys. If you don't give me money, I'll snort into the mic some more. Um, And also blow into the fucking mic. So, yeah, please. If you could, however, you could support the streams this week, by all means, please do. All right? In fact, people are supporting literally right now, and I'm going to shout those out in a little bit. <clears throat> so thank you for that. Yeah, thank you all for giving me money while me begging constantly so I can get my money back. Because I was sick, you guys. In, you know, in advance, we have a shout-out segment I will do at the end here. Okay? I ended the show. All right? So thank you for that. All right. Now news Ladies yeah uh, guys i had to beg guys i need that money guys oh, but by the way news ladies and gentlemen today we actually have some news to talk about so let's actually jump right into the segment i'm not even gonna do an intro for it <laughs> no intro but for his day off segment he did a little intro for it but for the news segment nah he just looked on twitter and just saw some news that was Either A, hot off the presses <clears throat> a week ago, or just stuff that he thinks it's more generally interesting to talk about. But other people could talk about it and be more interesting and provide more information than this motherfucker does. All right. Oh, one other thing I should say. Oh my God, he didn't even get into the news yet. You may notice advertisements on my streams. I'm testing YouTube's auto advertisement system. They launched this about a month ago, maybe a little under a month ago. They've been pushing heavily for streamers like me to start using it. I thought that you weren't all into the ads, Phil, that you don't put out ads because you're not like those streamers. And now all of a sudden you're going to put out ads because YouTube recommended that I use this. And he has too much pride to put out ads. He's putting out ads. But then again, him begging is essentially an advertisement. What it does is it just auto runs ads during the streams. And there's different levels you can do. There's like conservative, balanced, and heavy. I promise you guys, I will never use heavy ads. That's, it's ridiculous. From what I'm to understand, it tries running an ad like every five minutes. And I'm never going to do that. I know if I did that, it would essentially really hurt my content. There'd be people who would be so disappointed because they're trying to watch and they can't concentrate because there's ads in your face every, every minute. I'm not Phil, you bitch and complain about everybody that streams that they use advertisements. And now all of a sudden that you're doing it, though, you're thinking that people are going to be disappointed and you're going to hate doing that in your content. Phil, you do that all the goddamn time. Every single time you're like, come on, guys, I need your support. You're shilling yourself out as an advertisement so that people can give you more money. You do it all the time. And yet you're playing the hypocrite here. But then again, Kettleton, what are you doing? Put the gun down. Not going to do that. At most, I'll try balanced, but a lot of streams, I've been trying conservative, and people have been basically been saying that conservative ads means that it runs an ad maybe every 30 minutes, and it's like, some of them are short, like, I think the longest ad someone mentioned was 30 seconds, but most of them are very short, like 5 to 10 seconds long. A lot of them are skippable ads anyway. Um, I don't know what balanced would do, so we're testing that today, and I'm curious what you guys are seeing on the stream today like is it any different than what you saw with the conservative i was i wanted to try the balanced today because i figured it's not a narrative based game so it doesn't matter when the ad runs it's not going to be a huge deal it's multiplayer right for a man that says that he's trying this out he does no fucking research into it whatsoever he doesn't know what the conservative balance or heavy ads are he has no fucking idea he's just going by what he thinks they're going to be oh but the ads are going to be skippable Again, how do you know, Phil? There are most of the time there's ads that are not skippable, and you have to watch them all the way through. Sometimes they run them twice. So I wanted to give it a shot. <clears throat> so 
I want to give it a shot, guys, because I'm always changing and adapting, but not how all the other people are doing it, but I'm just doing it my own way. Okay, it was a five-second ad, and it was skippable. It was, a, And someone said, I got a 10-second Amazon ad. You got a football ad. Were they bad? Because what gets me is that it's supposed to be balanced. And if you guys are saying that it's just like a couple quick ads in, that's not even that bad at all, right? Oh, that's not that bad at all because I could get some more income from these ads, you guys. I mean, oh, I'm very disappointed. It's going to ruin the experience. I got two 10-second long ads. I got a Google phone ad. I got a 15-second ad for bras. It was unskippable. I just love the fact that Phil does no research into it at all, but he has his chat, a.k.a. his guinea pigs, do all the research for him. So it's really sad that he has to use his audience that way. But then again, he does use it like a stockholders meeting. Well, I'm sure you enjoyed it. <laughs> How do you know they enjoyed it, Phil? How do you even fucking know? Oh, bra ad. Maybe the reason why it's on your fucking streams, Phil, is because... My God, Phil, we've seen your tits bounce up and down a lot, Phil. It's like, my God, maybe you need one. Oh, yeah, he's taking a sip. Hmm, chew, 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 yum, yum, yum. Now, first of all, why am I doing this? Well, it's very simple. Losing out, being sick, hurt me a lot. I'm not going to lie. It set me back a lot, and not doing that marathon really hurt this business. It did. That's a marathon that every year I do, and it usually helps a ton, and I didn't have it. So look, look how, how low we are on memberships right now. Typically, this would have skyrocketed during the marathon, and look where we are, right? Then again, Phil, you're just going by what you're thinking would have happened. But every single time you have marathon events, you usually don't get that many memberships. You fail to realize that most of the whales that give you memberships aren't really around anymore. They're doing shit on their own, and they're not even gonna to contribute to you. But some of the whales actually stick around and just give you like little bits and pieces of it, but yet, you fail to realize that the reason why your numbers are low, it's not because of the event. It's because of you. Same thing with Super Chats and everything. You know, what are you going to do? So, what I'm trying to do is experiment with these ads to see, does it actually benefit me at all? You know, I don't have a lot of viewers. Right now on stream, what do we have, 400? I don't even know. Well, you have close to about 490, which is actually a good viewership. But the problem is, is that you're looking at that viewership and you're thinking, I deserve a lot more money out of this, guys. Come on, give me $5. Yeah, oh, we have almost 500 viewers? What the hell's going on? There's not, guys, just so you know, there's nothing special going on today. We're just playing Call of Duty. I don't know why you're all here. <laughs> well, that's the reason why, Phil, you're playing Call of Duty. A lot of people like watching people play Call of Duty. And sadly, you're on there, though because of that reason but also people want to see you get your ass kicked a bunch in call of duty so that's another one <laughs> there's nothing special going on here i don't know why i have so many viewers but anyway oh then again this is something coming from the guy that says that he's nothing special but yet he is surprised he gets about 500 viewers on his fucking channel that's sad um <clears throat> i don't get a lot of viewers so with the amount of viewers that i get you know, is it even beneficial? Would I even get anything out of these ads on the streams? I literally don't know. I have no idea. But I'm demoing it. I figure, you know, give it give it a few days, maybe a week of testing. And then maybe I'll have some data I can look at and say, gee, did I actually make anything on this? Did it make sense? And did it hurt the viewers? Did it hurt the stream? Are people upset that these ads automatically run at set intervals? Or is it not that big of a deal? Because if it's not that big of a deal, then I might as well just leave it on, right? The reason why he's doing this is because he's trying to bounce back by putting ads into his stream. So that way he could try to earn some extra income out of it. That's the main reason why he's doing it, though. But the way that he's trying to project it onto his audience, though, is saying that it's just an experiment, guys. I just want to see how it works. I just want to see if the ads will interfere with the streams, even though he is going to get some pocket money from this. But if it is a big deal and it's bothering you guys, I don't want to do it. So this is all a test for everyone. Okay. Even though he's saying that his audience might not like the ads, Lord knowing he's not going to remove them due to the fact that he's trying to make up that money that he lost during his time off being sick. So let's see what happens. Please give me feedback this week on this. Okay. Oh my God. The prayer hands, not only for tips, but for feedback. Come on guys. I'm begging you. I implore you to give me feedback. No. Phil wants to sit there and say that he is suffering, even though within the same podcast wants to go on and explain that on his day off, 
he ended up buying sushi so that way him and his wife can enjoy it while she plays like a dragon gaiden it's like phil you want to say that you have no money for anything and yet you're trying to save as much money as you possibly can but yet you order out doordash to get sushi which costs a lot of money but also in that same breath you want to continue by saying hey I actually bought ingredients to make food at home. I'm going to start doing that. And then all of a sudden, DoorDash. So within the same breath, you just essentially say you're going to do one thing, but ended up going back to what you originally do. And also, you want to say that running ads on there as an experiment, but it's just a way for you to try and make some money back up due to the fact you got your money removed due to chargebacks and that people aren't feeling very generous to give you money. Except for today, though, where you actually made a good chunk of the money back due to the fact that your whales and most people that, go, that give you money are very fucking gullible. It's like, Phil, stop saying that you're suffering. You're not suffering. You have a 6k yearly figure every single time. You want to say that you're suffering? Go work an actual 9 to 5 job, then say that you're sick, and then try to recover from that. But until then, just shut the fuck up. But with that said and done, we will end it off with the fiddle prayer. Deliver us from the dents. Deliver us from the pay pigs. Deliver us from the pignosis. May we never become dented. And may we never become a beggar like Darkseid Phil. And for the love of God, if you are suffering and you need help, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Just don't go the pig roach method by constantly begging for people to give you money. That is never the good look to go for. Amen.